Lord, Limbar Art Central Church. God is good all, all the time. And all the time, God is good. So this is Joseph here and Elizabeth, my good, beautiful daughter. We're here in Kenya. I take this God-given opportunity to welcome you all to our online Sunday meeting at home. Brethren, even though I am in Kenya, let me tell you, it's a pressure to be worshipping God with you this morning. In fact, as it is written in John 4, 21, I've read that one in my Bible just now, that a time is coming and has come now when you will worship the Father, neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. But true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. That's so good. Some may be asking right now, what do we need in this service? I tell you what, just relax. All what we need is, because we we're going to have communion after. So what you will need is glasses. You can have two glasses depending with how many you are. You'll have your Bible with you handy. And you can have... You can use biscuit, you can use bread, whatever you got on your table. And um, now guys, let's please kindly stand together and start to worship our God with singing, singing. Who you are, you 
been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love 
your voice. You have led me to the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God.
to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died Praise the certain of one thing generally and that's that, and that is that things do change and wow haven't they changed so here we are just finishing the third week of school holidays three weeks who would have thought we'd have three weeks school holidays yay that's awesome but we can't have birthday parties we can't get together with our friends and hang out that's because this whole world is going through massive change at the moment so this morning, I'm going to tell you about something that never changes, something that's a constant and always there, always for us. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a minute. Can you guess? Let me tell you, it's God's love. God loves us. It is the love of God that is always there. It, that's, and we can be so certain of that in our life. It's always there for us. So let's talk about love. What does love look like? To my knowledge, there are three types of love. There's filio, which is the love between a brother and a sister and, and um, friends. And there's also part of that is the love that parents have for their children, for you guys. And that's called storge. I've only just learnt that word and I'm not sure of the correct pronunciation, but that's okay. The second type of love is eros, and that's the love between a husband and a wife. The third love is the love of agape. And that is the love of God 
the, the love that never changes and is always there. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, it says, and I'm going to read this because I want to get it right. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Ooh. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. Wow, that's pretty amazing. There's one thing in this world that doesn't change, and that's God's love. It's always there for us no matter what. I, want, I keep saying it, but I really want you to get that because it's so true. I found this painting in a cupboard the other day. And on the bottom it says, I'll read it, love is patient, love is kind, love never ends. And I thought, wow, that's pretty terrific. Go to our activity. I'm going to try and paint something a little bit like the painting because I really like that and it's pretty, it looks pretty simple. I'm not very artistic, but I'm going to have a go and I'm doing it with love. So that's all that matters. So I want, what I want you guys to do is perhaps do a painting, a drawing, a collage. You could use um, broken tiles and make a picture out of that. Or you could even use Play-Doh. Or, as Heath did, you could use Lego. But do a painting for someone who is really important in your life and who you love. Oh, look, see, I've got bits everywhere. Who you love and you want to appreciate and show them how much you love them, that you're grateful for them. And when you've finished your painting, I like this colour, when you've finished your painting, perhaps you can put it on our Facebook page so everyone can see it. Could I say a quick prayer for you guys? Because I always pray with you when we meet together face to face. Um, Father, Thank you so much for these awesome young people. Lord, in this, this difficult time of change and adjustment, I pray, Father God, you draw them closer and closer to you. I pray, Father God, they would feel your love and they would know that your love is always there, never ending. I pray, Father God, a double portion of blessing on them. And Lord, keep them safe. Keep them safe. And um, I just pray, Lord, as they do their artwork with love and gratitude, that they will give it to someone and it will be just so beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, folks. It's lovely to see you again this morning um, as we gather for to take communion during our service. So if you haven't got your, your bread and juice, please pause and, and go and go and get it and get it ready now. Um, this morning, I, I'm, I'm, the scripture I'm using is from Romans 5, 6 to 8. And uh, it's when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for our sins. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might be perhaps willing to die for a person who was especially good. But God showed his great love to, for us by sending Christ to die for us while, while we were still sinners. And today, it, it, the day after Anzac Day, it's right for us to celebrate those who selflessly gave their lives in sacrifice for their country and won the freedoms we so enjoy in our day and age. Those who have selflessly served our country in times of great need and those who are still serving, we really do need to remember their sacrificial service because it is sacrificial. Even today that we saw the army and, and services go in to bushfire ravaged areas and they were there for, for a couple of months and they're now serving in, in, as, as we go through this corona crisis. It, it does come as a co at a cost to them and their families, and unless we've served, I don't think we really understand. Today, together, we can celebrate communion in freedom because of their sacrifice. But today, we're, we're concentrating on Jesus' sacrifice for us, and it's all about Jesus. And in today's scripture, I like that phrase, 
when we were utterly helpless because that is how we were before we accepted Jesus Christ as our, as our Lord and our Saviour. We were helpless in our sins. And Jesus came to earth and willingly sacrificed himself and took the punishment we so richly deserved. He took it upon himself and, and, and brought us to a place where when we accept Jesus into our lives, uh, we can come into a right relationship with our Father in heaven. So today, we take this little meal together and remember all that Jesus suffered for us. We take this little piece of bread and this cup of juice and we remember Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus took everything we deserve and and redeemed us and brought us back into right relationship with our Father. So let's pray. Father, thank you that you, you loved us so much. You didn't want to be without us. Thank you that you, you sent your son Jesus and he suffered terribly for us. He, he, his body was broken. His blood was shed. And we have complete and total forgiveness of sins. With thankful and grateful hearts, Jesus, we remember all that you did. And we take now this little piece of bread and we remember all that you did. And we also now take the cup representing Jesus' shed blood and we do it with thankful and grateful hearts. Thank you, folks. Enjoy the rest of our service. Hello, Riverland Central. It's Dave here. As we get ready to give this morning, I'd like to take the opportunity to show you an outreach program that has recently started at Riverland Central Church. You'll see photos on the screen of a little free pantry, a wooden cupboard that's been fixed to the veranda at the church building, and inside of it there are food staples, non-perishable food items, tins of soup and other tins, rice, pasta, cereal, milk, the basics that people might need if they're down on their luck or if they're otherwise needy. The idea is that people who need such items can come and they can take them from the little free pantry knowing that they are a free gift from God and from the church to them. I want to thank you because being able to do things like this is largely driven by your generous tithes and offerings, your generous donations to the church. We understand that we're actually giving to God. James chapter 1 Verse 27 says, Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. The world corrupts us by making us think inwardly, by causing us to be greedy, to be causing us to be scared and to want to hang on to and hoard what we've got. Those who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, though, those who've been a mate, made a new creation in Christ, we understand that the hallmarks of the kingdom are generosity, are grace, and are being free in giving away the things that God has given us, knowing that he will always give us more than enough. So thank you on behalf of people who use the Little Free Pantry, and I just want to encourage you to continue to generously give through this time because we're unlocking generosity in our community in a whole heap of ways. We're looking for opportunities to love our community, to be generous to our community, and to bless not just the Riverland, but all of our ongoing missions partnerships around the world. In just a moment, the uh, bank details for the church will come up if you want to give electronically. Alternatively, feel free to get in touch with us through the church office, and we can figure out other ways for you to give your tithes and offerings through this time. God bless you on this great Sunday.
Good morning, everybody. Good to see you here. My name's Joella, and I get to bring you a message from the Word of God this morning. Before we do, though, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's been contributing to this new way of doing things, this new way of um, meeting together. Just want to say a real big thank you to you. We're all learning a lot, and it's a steep learning curve, and I just want to say thank you for, for being with us in all of this so that we can be together in this way this morning. So today we're continuing the series David introduced last week, Jesus Christ Who? And we're telling our stories of who Jesus is in our lives as part of that. So my story begins uh, when I was just a little child. I grew up in a Christian family, um, going to church every week, which I'm very, very grateful for. I remember uh, when I was maybe four or five years old, we had a guest speaker in church, a tiny little Baptist church in the town of Laura in the mid-north of South Australia. And um, this, this preacher asked who wanted to be a child of God, who wanted to belong to God. And I remember deciding in that moment that I wanted to belong to God. I wanted to follow him. And I have this little image in my head of this little girl wearing this particular little dress, um, giving herself to God. Of course, that wasn't the end of my story. Uh, I grew up a little bit and uh, continued being part of the church, part of the family and going off to Easter camps, which a real high point for me spiritually, but also socially. But because by the time I'd hit my early teens, I was boy crazy and uh, Easter camps gave me some great opportunities to meet new boys. By the time I was 16, uh, I was in year 11, I was in Adelaide at a much larger school than I'd been to before and I had met a whole lot of wonderful boys and girls and made lots of great friends and by the time we hit the middle of the year I'd set my sights on a particular boy and uh, we were we were sort of beginning to start some kind of a relationship. And I have this image in my brain uh, standing outside the music centre at the school with a red brick wall in my vision and needing to make a decision. I don't know if it was as clear to me then as it is in retrospect, but in retrospect, I see that there was a crucial decision to make and it was a decision not just of the mind and the emotions and the will, but of the spirit. And I think I knew at that moment that I had a choice to make, whether I would follow Jesus as king of my life and allow his rule and his reign to guide me, or whether I would do my own thing. And in this case, my own thing meant pursuing this relationship with the boy. So there I was, red brick wall in my vision, making a choice. Can you guess which way I chose? When you think about Jesus' earthly ministry, he taught a lot of things and some of those might spring into your mind straight away about loving each other, loving your neighbours. But, you know, the thing that he actually talked most about was the kingdom of God. When he began his earthly ministry, his key message was repent for the kingdom of God is near. And that's recorded in three of the, the Gospels very, very clearly. In Luke 4, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God because that is why I was sent. There's so much, particularly in Matthew talks about it as the kingdom of heaven. The others talk about the kingdom of God. They're interchangeable. But so many of his stories begin, the kingdom of God is like. Way back in Genesis, God established his kingdom on the earth through people. You know, he says in one, uh, Genesis 1, 28, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. You know that term govern, those terms rule, that was God establishing his kingdom on the earth, reigning through his people. But of course, the Old Testament story, it's a very long story, is all about people rejecting God over and over again as their king. So the New Testament brings Jesus heralding, announcing the kingdom of God is being established once again. The fact that Jesus was announcing the kingdom and himself as king was part of the problem that the religious leaders had with him and part of the reason he found himself arrested and on trial before Pilate. If you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 18, we'll read from verse uh, 30. Three, but it finds Jesus on trial before Pilate, and Pilate is a bit puzzled and confused. It says, Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked him. And Jesus replied, Is this your own question, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. 
If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders, but my kingdom is not of this world. So we hear that Jesus' kingdom is not an earthly kingdom based in a particular location. The question then says, well, when is this kingdom of God coming? And, and uh, Jesus answered that question in Luke 17. It says, one day, Luke 17 verse 20, one day the Pharisees asked Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? And Jesus replied, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. You won't be able to say, here it is, or it's over there. For the kingdom of God is already among you. That must have puzzled them no end. Just in the next chapter in Luke 19, it says, uh, Jesus told them a story to correct the impression that the kingdom of God would begin right away. So it's kind of puzzling. It's kind of this notion of kingdom and, and Jesus being the king of a kingdom is kind of fuzzy it's kind of hard to pin down just when you think you've got it it's here it's now but it's not yet it's where where is it but you know as i've studied this over various years and i've, I've looked at this and I've, I've wrestled with it again and again i've come to understand that the kingdom of god isn't a geographical location it isn't a place but it does have a king and the king is jesus and it does have a people and the people are those who believe in him the people, the subjects of the kingdom are those who trust in him, those who obey him. You know, in Matthew 7, Jesus said, Matthew 7, 21, he said, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father will enter. Jesus loves us. He wants good things for us and he gives us freedom to choose whether we will live in his kingdom or not, whether we will live under his rule. And of course, that means under his protection, under his provision, under his grace or not. The kingdom of God exists wherever people recognize Jesus as king and choose to come under his rule, choose to come under his reign, submit themselves to his authority, and when that happens, where that happens, he lives with us and in us and once again rules in this world through his people. Where God rules, where Jesus is allowed to be king, blessing flows. Where Jesus is allowed to be king, there's healing, there's restoration, there's love, there's grace, there's miracles, there's protection, there's provision, there's joy. There's delight. Jesus Christ is king. He came to announce it and I'm declaring it to you today. So I think I probably hinted at the fact that I chose the boy. I rejected Jesus' kingship over me and I chose the boy. That could have been disastrous. It was okay. For the next 18 months, we uh, had a on again, off again, dramatic, tumultuous, unhealthy relationship that probably left us both fairly damaged. That wasn't God's best for me. However, because God is gracious, because God still loved me and hadn't taken his hand off me, I was protected from the worst of what could have happened. When I look back now, I think, oh my gosh, God allowed me to be shielded from so much during that time. But at the end of that 18 months, at the end of year 12, with exams over, uh, that boy dumped me and I was shattered. I went home back to the country with my tail between my legs, feeling very sad and sorry for myself and realising that I had done some really dumb things. So I went home to Laura, totally crushed. And there in Laura, I connected with one of my friends who we'd been friends since we were about seven. Uh, some of you know her. Her name is Jeanette. And uh, we went for a walk along a long dirt road. And I remember just being so upset and telling her about all that had happened. And, and I remember her just saying to me, you need to come back to Jesus. And of course, she was absolutely right. I needed to bring myself back under the lordship and the grace the kingship and the love of King Jesus because not only is he king he's also savior he's also lover he's also redeemer he's also restorer forgiver and king so Jesus is king 
He came to establish his kingdom on earth. But for you, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know him in, in any way at all, then he is the king of, of this earth and he's coming back and he's going to come back and he's going to rule and you really need to know him before that happens because there won't be any second chances then, but there are plenty of them now. So call out to this Jesus and say, Jesus, I don't really know you, but show me who you are. Reveal yourself to me and, and help me to know you as as king as king of my life you can begin by finding a bible if you haven't got one then get in contact with us and we'll get one to you and begin to see how god has revealed himself through jesus to us on the earth here but if you already know jesus you follow him but maybe you're following a soft and fluffy version of jesus then i would encourage you if there are some parts of your life that are outside of his kingdom that you're keeping away from him, then bring them into submission to him and allow him to minister to you. You know, that next um, eight or 12 months after I was dumped, after I gave myself back to Jesus, everything turned around. Those areas that had been wounded, Jesus healed. Those areas that had been damaged were restored. Those things where relationships had been broken and turned upside down were made right again. And gradually I was restored and made whole so that I could begin new relationships in a healthy and whole kind of way. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you sent Jesus to reestablish your kingdom, that Jesus is king of his kingdom. And Lord, I, I just willingly along with my brothers and sisters now, just bring ourselves again into your uh, presence and acknowledge you as our king. And we just bring all of the parts of our lives into your kingdom, leaving nothing outside, but bring it all under your provision and your protection and your love and your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you're the king. Lord, for those who don't know you, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them and show them what it is to live in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Well, this brings us to the end of this part of our meeting today. But today we've got something a bit exciting. Normally when we meet together uh, at Mortimer Road, after we break the formal part of the meeting, we get together for coffee and cake and there's lots of mingling and people talking in different spaces and different groups. Well, we're going to do a similar thing today. At 11 o'clock this morning, there will be some uh, Zoom meetings happening. There'll be a number of them. The links will be up on the Facebook page and we'll also send them to you if you're on our contact list by text message. So you can uh, click on the link and jump into one of these Zoom meetings. There'll be one for children and parents, uh, kids and teens and parents and the kids church team. And there'll be a couple of others that are for anybody to join. So feel free to pop into one of those, bring your own tea, bring your own coffee, bring your own cake. Pop into one of those Zoom meetings. Zoom is a video conferencing um, tool for those of you who are not familiar with it. Pop in and say good day. Have a conversation with a few other people. Stay for just a few minutes. They'll be open for 40 minutes, those uh, Zoom meetings from 11 till 11.40. So pop in, say good day, uh, enjoy one another. If you're not able or don't want to do that, that's fine. But why don't you pick up the phone and call somebody from the church and just say, hey, how are you going? Is Jesus King in your life? Ooh, nothing like a confronting question. Fabulous, guys. Have a great week and we'll catch up with you 7.30 each night for our prayer meetings and again next week 